morning. Welcome to Command Your Morning. I trust that you had a, a glorious night. My name is Pastor Joshua, the Oasis of Hope, from the Oasis of Hope. I'm privileged, I'm honored to be the founding pastor of this ministry. And we thank God for the things that God is doing through us to the nations. We praise God for his grace at work in our lives. I want you to just take some few minutes right where you are and let's pray. Let's pray. Then after that, we'll give you a minute to just enjoy some wonderful worship. So let's just pray. Open up your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise you. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you this morning. We praise you. Thank you for a glorious night. Thank you for a wonderful night. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we take some time in your presence this morning, I declare that we are coming out enriched, built, established unto good works to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So I want us to go to the word. I trust that the last episode was very enriching to you. I just want to reiterate things that we talked about and then we will continue building from the same. My message title, Command Your Morning. We said the following. Number one, that a morning can be the beginning of a day. It can be the beginning of a dispensation. It can also be the beginning of an age, a season, a career. It can be the beginning of a new business. It can be the dawn of a new business opportunity, a new opportunity somewhere, an opportunity to even exit from one country to another for work, for study, or for various things in the individual's life. And that it is paramount, it's very important for us to understand what, what are we doing when we are talking about commanding our morning. One of the things that we discussed was number one, we have to understand, first of all, if it is an age, who made the age? Because we have to ask the question, who can command a morning? What does the word command mean? And we came out with some synonyms and we say it is to give an authoritative order. So we asked who does give an authoritative order? And we say it is God. So then we ask the question, how can I give an authoritative order? I'm not God. And we said that you must become a son. To become a son, the word son of God in the Bible means, it also means God in human flesh. God in human flesh. Now when that happens, how does that happen, sorry? It happens when we give our lives to Jesus. Praise the Lord. It happens when we give our life to Jesus. So when we surrender our lives by a confession of our mouth, salvation is by a confession of our mouth. What do we confess? The Lordship of Christ. We don't confess sin. We don't confess sin. I hear people say, telling people, repeat this prayer after me, then you are born again. Say, to, say, say, say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I, I, I come to you, forgive my sin. Which sins? You, you, you cannot confess sin to become saved. When you confess sin, you awaken a sin consciousness. You become sin conscious. No wonder many people struggle in their salvation work. They wonder why they can't live, why they can't abandon certain habits in their lives. It's because they confess the sin nature. They confess sin a sin nature. When you confess sin, you, 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 you awaken a sin nature. When you awaken a sin nature, sin nature will trouble you. But what does the Bible say? I read to you, I, 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 I took you through Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10. What does it say? 
that we confess the Lordship of Christ. When I confess the Lordship of Christ, I have opportunity, I have opportunity to come under the power, to come under the glory, to come under the ability of Christ. So Christ overcame sin. He defeated sin on the cross. So he that I have come under defeated sin. So he led me in triumph over sin always. Praise the Lord. He led me in triumph over sin always. And that's what the Bible talks about. There are doctrines that have been crafted in scripture that don't really come from scripture. The apostle Paul calls them the doctrines of men. Some of them, he calls them the doctrines of demons. But whatever these doctrines do, they don't help building a believer or a Christian for that matter. So we also said a Christian is one who is born again. No one who goes to a building that has a cross or has an English name. One who is surrendered. He has, he has, he has surrendered to the Lordship of Christ by the confession of his mouth. They are born again. They are now sons of God. They are children of God. They have, they have the, the God life in, in them. Praise the Lord. They have the God life in them. Now, I want to come to, 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 to the scripture that we read again in John chapter 1 and verse, verse, 3, verse 3. But I want to go and read verse, verse 16. Verse 16 John chapter 1 and verse 16. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can turn on your Bible to that, to that, to that, to that part. I will read it in the, in the English, in the King James, sorry. Let's, let's read it in the Amplified. Let's, let's look at it in the, in the Amplified. Now, amplified does not mean it is saying things that are not there. What it says is just amplifying the things that are already there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So John, John chapter 1 and uh, verse 16 in the Amplified. The Bible says, if you're there, I will read already. The Bible says, for out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. Now, we say that when we have come into a relationship with Christ, we have become one with the Lord. We have become one with the Lord. Now, because we have become one in the Lord, our spirits, our spirits are opened to him and we have received Christ. We have received the whole of himself. We did not receive in parts. We receive the whole of Christ. Of his fullness have we all received. So if you are born again, there are prayers you cannot pray. You can't you can pray a prayer like touch me once more. You can't pray such a prayer. Touch me once more. Where do you want him to touch you? You, are, you have received the whole of himself. You have received the whole of himself. He said you have received the whole of and of his fullness. The word fullness there is from the Greek pleroma, which means maximum loads. Maximum loads. So you have received a maximum load of Christ. No wonder the apostle Paul says, it's no longer I. It's no longer I that liveth but Christ on the inside of me. And the life I live, I live by, by, by grace, through faith in him that saved me. I live it by grace. I live it by grace. I have received fullness, the fullness of Christ. If you are full of something, you will talk about that thing. 
If you are full of something, you will speak from that thing. If you are full of something, you will talk from that thing. Praise the Lord. You will talk from what you are full of. I can talk from the word of God because I am full of the word of God. Someone else can talk from something else because they are full of that thing. Praise the Lord. We say that it is only God that can command our mornings. Praise the Lord. It's only God. So how does God talk on earth? He talks through you. Who is the believer? Who is the Christian? Because it's no longer you that live it, but Christ on the inside of you. So, you, so Christ in you begins to speak to your dispensation. How does he do that? He is the word. Remember we said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So once you have the word of God in you, you have the authority to speak to any situation in your life. I want to ask you a question. How did God create the universe? How did God create the universe? The Bible says he spoke. If you read Genesis chapter, let's, let's go there quickly. Let's go there quickly. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And let's read, we'll read it in the Amplified. Verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. Now that's verse 1. But verse 2 is totally different. It says, The earth was formless and void, or a waste and emptiness, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. The Spirit of God was hovering, was moving, hovering, brooding, brooding, brooding over the face of the waters. Now, God could not have created the heavens and the earth in verse 1, and then in verse 2, the earth is formless. Between verse 1 and verse 2, something happened. Praise the Lord. Something happened. And that, that which happened was not good. Between verse 1 and verse 2 is a dispensation where Satan, he, he, he sinned against God and was cast down. And upon his casting down, he missed creation. He missed creation. Look at verse 3. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, and God said. And God said. Praise the Lord. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. If you study, you will discover at the end of creation, the sixth day, the Lord looked at what he had created and said it was good. Now, this God that said, let there be light, and there was light, lives in you. Praise the Lord. He lives in you. If he lives in you, then there are things that ought to change around you. Romans 11 says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall revitalize. He shall give life. Shall give life. Shall give life to your mortal body. Mm. Anything that is mortal wastes away. It wastes away. If anything that is mortal wastes away, it is possible, therefore, that when God created you, you received Christ, you are living a good life, then something happened in your life. Something happened in your dispensation of, in your age. Something happened. You were to go into something and things didn't work out. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus dwells in you, 
you have authority to correct it. Praise the Lord. You have authority to correct it. But there has to be something that has to happen in your life. Now that you are born again, now that you are a Christian, there is something that has to happen in your life. Let's look at the scripture. Let's look at the scripture quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scripture. Matthew. Praise the Lord. Oh, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. The Lord is good. The Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Matthew 16 and verse 19. Matthew 16 and verse 19. The Bible says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, the the translation in the King James does not render correctly this scripture. It's supposed to read, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth must be what is bound in heaven. And whatever thou shalt lose on earth must be what is loosed in heaven. Why? Because the word of God is already settled. Praise the Lord. The word of God is already settled. Those things that are unwanted in, king, in the kingdom of heaven are already unwanted. They are not going to be formed anew. Those things that are wanted in the kingdom of heaven are already wanted. They are good stuff, good things. The Apostle Paul says, whatever, whatever things are true, whatever things are, are good, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, these are the things that have been loosed in heaven. Health, wellness, glory, virtue. These are the things that have been loosed in heaven. And these are the things that we ought to release on earth. So in order for you to command your morning, you must speak in agreement with the word of God. Do not say anything contrary to what the word has said about you. Don't say anything contrary to what the Bible talks about you. If the word says that you are healed, say you are healed. Then your life is going to reflect that glory of health and wholeness. If the word of God says you are blessed, Always say you are blessed. Never walk around and say, I don't have even a dime in my pocket. No, that's not the language of a Christian. You wake up in the morning, oh, and I'm so tired. No, you say I'm invigorated with life. Hallelujah. I'm invigorated with life. The glory of the Lord shines upon me. You don't wake up and you are finding a challenge in your life, in the cause of doing business, in the cause of running your life. You meet a challenge and you're like, I don't know what to do. No, you know what to do. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. I have the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is at work in me. When you begin to talk in agreement with the word of God, your dispensation, your age, the dawn of a new era in your life will have begun and you will enjoy glory and excellence always in Jesus' name. Train your mouth. Train yourself to speak in agreement with the word of God. Don't say anything the word of God never said about your life. We can't close this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. I want you to say right after me, wherever you are, say, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you, Lord, and Savior of my life. I receive eternal life. I am born again. Congratulations. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for my listeners. Thank you for my viewers. 
I speak a blessing over their lives. I declare that the name of the Lord is named upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for their lives. They are enjoying your presence throughout their lives to the glory and honor of your name. If you're there and maybe you're unwell, I want to spend a few minutes and just pray for you. I speak healing over your body. Those that are in, in, in hospital beds, those, even those that are in the isolation centers, we declare healing upon your body right now. You are, your, your chest is conforming to the word of God. You are the healed of the Lord. You are walking in divine health. So everything around you, everything within you, everything in you is conforming to this word. You are healed in Jesus' name. Walk out, wake up and begin to do what you could not do to the glory and honor of the name of the Lord. I thank you. The Lord bless you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Thank you.